just before we came on air, the court ruled on Moore v. Harper. Uh, this was a this was a case that had to do with uh, North Carolina, and it was uh, the so-called independent state legislature theory that a lot of people were worried about because it would have, among other things, there's a lot of other things that are associated with this, but one of the things like sort of like directly in play is it would have allowed the legislature to uh, change the way that uh, electors um, in the Electoral College are chosen even after an election. In other words, it's basically saying like, um, there can't be any type of interference from the courts or anything like that, even a state court. Um, this is the theory they were trying to push. And so you, a Republican controlled legislature could do whatever it wanted after the fact, even after a vote. That was really the implications of it narrowly tailored. Um, so, uh, this case was essentially, well, they lost the case, but I'm seeing different uh, people sort of like assess it in different ways. Uh, let's put up, let's do uh, Rick Pildes uh, first. Um, he is a uh, an election law expert. And um, he says that the court has provided some clarity about this issue. Um State constitutions continue to bind state legislators, but it also le left a vague standard mm. hanging over the 2024 elections. Um, the Constitution prohibits state courts from transgressing the ordinary bounds of judicial review when they interpret state constitutions or, or even statutes. Uh, the court, however, is making it clear that it's not providing any standard at all. It's not even an attempt at a standard as to what this means uh, in a concrete fashion. Um, in the midst of those elections, so we get a clear definition of the boundaries on the federal constraint in this decision recognizes on state court uh, uh, making. So this, he's convinced this is still going to be litigated. But um, there, at the very least, there's sort of like a outward bound cap that the Supreme Court has put on in terms of uh, of what the uh, legislature can do, but they can still get up involved in some really nasty stuff. And I think uh, it remains to be seen. We'll, we'll, in the in the coming weeks, we'll have somebody on yeah. when when people have had time to digest this uh, ruling. But for now, it is not the worst case scenario. No, basically, I think where the gray area lies is that it does not provide the standard, as you say, but it preserves the jurisdiction of state courts and governor's offices over these kinds of election laws. So it's not just purely the state legislature being able to make these determinations unchecked. It can still be bandied about in the courts and with like the governor's input, I guess. So that doesn't necessarily mean that the election laws that come out of this are are going to be good, but it preserves a semblance of checks and balances that is could have been done away with like based on the most extreme interpretation of this independent state legislature thing now uh we still have some uh cases that are extant um from the court that we're going to hear really it, it, within the next week or and not even two i would imagine a week and i'm going to miss them and so uh when we get back uh, uh you know have a couple we'll more catch uh catch up but uh, the affirmative action case still is extant. Uh, that's whether colleges and universities can continue to take race as a consideration, as a factor in admissions. Um, there's a, uh, like a Colorado, uh, you know, wedding cake type of case uh, in there. Um, that graphic designer But in this person, instance, yeah. graphic designers. Um, they're... We've had more V. Harper has come out. Uh, Biden's student loan program. We've yet to hear from the court on that. That's going to come down shortly. Um, and uh, we'll see after that. Um, there's a couple others. Uh, there's like a, a mail carrier case 
that wants to uh, sue the U.S. Postal Service because it failed to accommodate his request not to work on Sundays. Um, there's, um, and I think that's, those are the biggies that we're waiting on. Uh, and, we'll, we'll, you know, when I get back from my, uh, my, my road trip with my kids, we're going to see a bunch of stuff. That'll but be fun. there are also other court, uh, cases that um, are going to be on the docket next year that are uh, of uh, import. One is, and this gets into the weeds uh, quite a bit, but it there was a, if folks remember, for many, many, many years, I mean, this went back even in 2004, Profits made abroad by U.S. companies were uh, kept off of U.S. shores because they did not want to be subject to attacks and they were waiting for a Republican to come in to essentially give a repatriation tax that was uh, cheaper than the actual tax. Mm. So George Bush did this in 2005, I think it was, under the American Jobs Creation Act. Uh, this happened again in 2017 under the uh, uh, the uh, the Trump years. Um, and essentially what it was, and just a reminder, Eisenhower allowed deferral of money coming back. Instead of having to be taxed in that year, if you were an American corporation, you were making money overseas, he allowed for deferral mm. to encourage investment and build up the rest of the world in the wake of World War II. This was a tax break, essentially. And over the years, it got morphed into a tax penalty to bring the money back and get taxed on it. So when the repatriation happens, it's a one-time tax. And there was this couple that owned uh, like 10% of an Indian company. During that repatriation uh, situation, they had to... Um, pay taxes on it they're bringing this suit a lot of people suspect not just for that but to inhibit the ability of the u.s government to impose a wealth tax we'll talk more about this uh in the future but this is uh, pretty important uh yeah. to keep in mind the name of the uh case um is more versus united states not to be confused with harper v more mm. uh so keep an eye on that the other one, this one is um, a case that we've talked about in the past. On Monday, that's yesterday, Supreme Court allowed for a decision to allow 230 men to sue Ohio State University. This is over a, um, a decades-old sexual abuse uh, cases that happened by a university doctor the guy is dead, Richard Strauss. Um, I, I think this had to do with a, uh, you know, going over a statute of limitations. But uh, the question was when the statute of limitations sort of like kicks in yeah. based upon when they understood, the, these wrestlers understood that they had been abused. And like Ohio State's been trying to get this case dismissed and luckily it, it failed. Strauss worked at the school from 78 to 98. Uh, the plaintiffs say the university officials failed to stop him despite complaints raised as early as the late 1970s. Many of them alleged Strauss abused them during required physicals or other medical exams at campus athletic facilities, a student health center, and his home and uh, campus clinic. Strauss killed himself uh, in 2005. In 2018, the university announced an investigation. It has apologized to his victims and reached over $60 million in settlements with at least 296 people. Um, but the uh, university eventually sought to have the remaining unsettled cases dismissed, arguing that the time limit for the claims had passed. Lower court found that the statute of limitations kicked in later than it did. Um, this is a dynamic that's happening around the country with cases where we're allowing uh, abuse cases to take place uh, either uh, because statutes are not kicked in until people understand that they have mm -hmm. been abused or legislatively like in New York 
where there's a window now, if you understand that you had been abused as a child, you could come back. Um, this story is important, but it has like broader political implications, particularly because of this clip. The members of that, um, of the various wrestling teams that in particular have a lot of claims against the university for not doing anything about this doctor. Their claims are founded in having told various uh, Ohio state officials that they had been uh, on, uh, subject to ongoing sexual harassment and abuse. And one of those officials was an assistant coach to the wrestling team, a guy named Jim Jordan. Mm. If that name sounds familiar, it should. He is, I think, the ranking guy on the Judiciary Committee. He's the chairman. Yeah. He's the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. As well as the Select Committee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government. Yeah. Hmm. And um, Jim Jordan knows this is out there. And we talked about it a couple years ago because of this testimony in front of the Ohio um, uh, House I think it was the Ohio House Justice Committee, Civil Justice Committee, looking for a statutory relief on the statute of limitations. And here is one of the victims, the, t the coach of the team, or the, I should say the captain of the team, talking about how Jim Jordan begged him to drop his case because it was going to hurt his political fortunes. Listen to this. This is disgusting. You people have the power to do something. Ohio State is too arrogant. They think it's going to go away. Jim Jordan called me crying. Crying. Groveling. On the 4th of July. Begging me to go against my brother. Begging me, crying for a half hour. That's the kind of cover-ups that go, that's going on there. Now, you guys can sit and act like it's not going on, but I, I got a, a lot of other stuff here. Emails that were taken out of my mailbox. That's a crime. He's talking about the cover-up uh, that he claims Ohio State and, and people like Jim Jordan were engaged in when student athletes went to him and said, this is going on, and he did nothing about it. More than nothing. And now, 10, 20, uh, 30 years later, I guess, 30, 40 years later, he's calling these victims and saying, please, please don't pursue this. Or contradict the testimony of your fellow teammates there are others i mean there's i, I remember when we covered this two, two or three years ago now i don't i don't know why it didn't get much coverage on the news maybe it did get some but i mean this is yeah <laughs> unbelievable he was an assistant for seven years at ohio state an assistant coach from 87 uh, until 1995 um, and it seems like discovery is going to be pretty unfortunate for Jim Jordan because there are multiple wrestlers, um, I think even referees, who told Jordan at the time. So it's not just him calling this victim and saying, go against your family um, because I could potentially be implicated. He's crying because he knows that there's probably something to hide in this instance for oh, Jordan. Yeah. It's not just like guilty by association it appears that based on the allegations at least jordan was active in the cover-up oh without i mean uh, i just want to make that clear believe, right there, I mean, there's there was multiple i remember there was multiple other people who said i went to jim jordan he just looked at me like with a blank stare and did nothing and the idea that his party this is one of the you know i don't know top four or five uh, republicans in the country in terms of like leadership his party is running on a groomer ticket oh yeah Do you know who was the last ohio wrestling coach republican that people talked about was denny hastert and he was the speaker of the house in the last half of the first 
decade of this century. And after his stint as Speaker of the House, I think he spent some time in jail for uh, accusations of child molestation, of wrestling, uh, of his wrestling athletes. It's not always projection. Some people are just hateful, but it's often projection. Yeah. So, um, Jim Jordan's not having a good day today, incidentally. So, if he, he seems a little cranky, mm-hmm. uh, he, you'll know why. Yeah, he should return to Tim Pool's show and talk about it. Did he go on Tim Pool's show? Yeah, four months ago. Huh. I'm sure Tim Pool's all over that. The grooming thing? They were yeah. talking about the weaponization of the internet. I don't think oh. they got to uh, him covering up uh, sexual abuse. You know. That's weird. It's people, weird. People have time limits. That's super weird. I'm really surprised by that. Because that guy really is he wants to get to the. He bottom gets red faced about a lot of things. Yep. <laughs> 